My family and I recently rediscovered a little game that delivers big fun. The rules are simple, but the play is wild. We soon recall that you really have to focus in this game because turns can skip, play gets thrown into reverse, and just when you think you're about to win, your daughter hits you with a draw too, only to find out that one of the cards that you draw is a draw for wild. This game has sold over 150 million copies. This is the story of Uno. In 1971, if you were to wander into Merle's Barbershop in Arlington Heights, Ohio, you could get a trim or an Uno game. You could probably get a haircut anywhere in the city, but if you wanted to play the new game that people were talking about, this was the only spot in town. Barber Merle Robbins created Uno as a twist on the popular game of Crazy Eights. Merle and his family were lovers of games, and one of their favorites was a card game that used two complete decks. And in this game, each picture card signified a command. A king reverse play, queens skipped a turn, aces were wild, etc. When a friendly argument began over which picture card meant what, the Robbins family resorted to writing down the commands on each card with a magic marker. But the cards were hard to read, and so Merle bought two blank decks of cards, and the next logical step was to print their own copies of the game. Merle's son Ray suggested the name Uno, Spanish for one. Uno had a nice ring to it, but it also signified the pinnacle of the game, when a player had only one card left and called out Uno. It was fast-paced and quite possibly perfect in its design for family play. Kids can compete with adults and not feel overmatched. Adults could have a blast without feeling foolish. Uno was destined to go beyond Merle's barbershop. But at first it looked like this. Yes, the red box we're all familiar with was at first a stunning pea soup green. And if you wanted a copy, you could buy it at Merle's barbershop for $3.49, or you could play it before you bought it by just going next door to Lichty's Tavern. Here's how clever Merle Robbins was. He set up an intercom system between his barbershop and Lichty's Tavern next door. If you came in for a haircut and his chair had a client in it, you wrote your name down and went next door to Lichty's and played the new card game Uno. Then, when the chair was ready, Merle would call you over the intercom and you'd go and get your haircut. But Merle Robbins wasn't just clever, he was courageous too, because he and his wife Marie sold their house to pay for the first production run of Uno. Then they bought a car and a trailer, and on the sides of the trailer they put signs that read, Uno, best card game in America. In the summer of 1971, you could see Elvis on tour. The much lesser touted Uno tour started in Cincinnati and headed south. Merle and Marie visited parks and campgrounds with their new game literally in tow. They pulled their dream through the Midwest, and then Texas, and then Florida, stopping at campgrounds and RV parks, showing anyone who would listen how to play their new game, and in doing so, won over many UNO fans. By the time they returned to Ohio just before Christmas, they had enough orders to sell their entire inventory of 5,000 games. Don Vonderhaars was a family friend who sold the game in his butcher shop, Word of this new game traveled, and soon Uno began to show up in popular Cincinnati department stores like Shalitos and Pogues. Not that there's anything wrong with cutting your teeth in barbershops, bars, and butcher's markets, but Uno was beginning to move up the retailing food chain. Bob Tezak was working in his family's funeral home business in Joliet, Illinois when he came across Uno. He loved the game so much that he called up Merle Robbins and bought a few cases of games. A few weeks later, much to Merle's surprise, Bob called again, this time wanting to buy the entire business. The Robbins family agreed to a payment of $50,000 and royalties of 10 cents per game. In 1971, Tezak, his brother-in-law Ed Aikman, and several others formed International Games Incorporated to promote the Uno card game. The 
first thing they did was get rid of the pea soup green packaging and change the game to the classic red that we now know. In less than 10 years, Uno became a massive hit. Bob Tezak told me that in 1981, international games sold 11 million copies of Uno, and card factories were printing around the clock in Belgium and Hong Kong. The success of the game allowed Tezak to have his own company jet, but it was their Joliet, Illinois headquarters that really was the symbol of their success. The address was one Uno circle. The reason behind the street address was obvious enough, but the shape of International Games' new headquarters was harder to put your finger on. From the ground, it was a curvy, unidentifiable oddity. To many in Joliet, it remains the house that Uno built. By the mid-80s, International Games had an entire lineup of games. In this photo from 1986, co-founder Ed Aikman holds up the 50 millionth Uno game produced. That same year, Western Publishing and Parker Brothers each tried to buy international games, but Tezak refused. He had the Midas touch, and wherever he turned, success seemed to follow. In 1990, he agreed to buy a part of the race team that won the Indianapolis 500. When Ari Leyendijk crossed the finish line first in 1990, his car was sporting the Uno logo. In 1992, Mattel bought International Games, and from the late 1990s onward, the power of using mega-popular brands dealt Uno cards to new audiences. Over the years, hundreds of brands, literally from A to Z, have had their logo emblazoned on an Uno deck. From American Kennel Club to Zelda, and it seems every brand in between. Merle Robbins passed away in 1984 at the age of 72, after he saw Uno become a colossal hit. According to this article from 1980, his royalties on the game were nearly $50,000 per month. It's been selling for nearly 50 years in 80 countries around the world, so it's conceivable that over a billion people have played this game. Now those are numbers that are hard to match. A lot of card games have come and gone since the launch of America's Favorite. There are games, but there's only one Uno. Hey, thanks for watching. Please consider liking this video, subscribing to this channel, and hitting that notification bell so you never miss out on the fun. Until next time, seize the play.